Hello class, welcome to the next segment in lecture 13, and in this segment we're going to get more into the mathematics of scales of motion, and specifically we're going to be introducing a parameter called the Rosby number and talk a little bit about that. So with that, let's go ahead and get right into it. So Rosby number is a mathematical ratio, and we'll see the definition of that very shortly, that can be used to classify the phenomenon. And one of the advantages that Rosby number has is that it uh, indirectly takes into account both the time scale and the horizontal length scale. So uh, this is a great rule of thumb to help classify phenomenon based on the characteristic length scale of the phenomenon and uh, a typical time that a typical length of time that it lasts in the atmosphere. And the Rossby number itself is defined as the magnitude of an air parcel's acceleration to the magnitude of the Coriolis force. And the reason why this makes sense is because remember that Coriolis force is only significant at large scales of motion. So it would make sense to factor in Coriolis force into our quantification of, of uh, scales of motion because uh, Coriolis force is significant at large scales of motion. So we want our Rossby number to reflect how significant the Coriolis force is to get an idea of whether it should be a synoptic scale, whether it's mesoscale, or whether it's a, a, a microscale phenomenon where Coriolis force is insignificant. So it makes sense that we're factoring in Coriolis force with this mathematical ratio. But if we want to plug in the expressions for that, so we get that the local air parcel acceleration, that's just du dt, and then Coriolis force is just the Coriolis parameter times the wind speed. And if we want to, we can do some substitutions in here where this might seem kind of weird at first, but the whole idea behind uh, scale of motion and also something called scale analysis, which again is something you'll explore in some of your upper division meteorology classes, where Anytime you have, say, uh, a term of wind velocity, you plug in this capital U, which is the characteristic horizontal velocity, or I should say the characteristic horizontal speed of the phenomena in question. And then where you see this time increment or factor of time, you plug in this capital T, which is the characteristic time scale of that phenomenon. So again, just to sort of reiterate that, this capital U represents the characteristic horizontal wind speed. And you'll notice that this uh, delta, uh, this du on top here gets replaced with the u, and also the u in this Coriolis force denominator also gets replaced with a capital U. And then t represents the characteristic time scale, and the other symbol that we'll introduce is a capital L, which is something we kind of saw in the previous segment, which will represent the horizontal length scale. And again, we'll actually factor that into the equation here. Right now, there's no L, but we'll show where the L actually comes from a little bit later on. And a lot of times, when you're going to calculate the Rossby number, the Coriolis parameter f, a lot of times just a factor of 10 to the minus 4 per second is used. That can vary depending on where you are at in the atmosphere. So let's say you're in the tropics, then a lot of times the value of f that you would use there would be 10 to the minus 5, since the Coriolis force gets weaker as you get closer to the equator. But for most of our intensive purposes, when we're looking at mid-latitude motions, that is, uh, say, uh, all the systems that are run between, say, 25 or 30 degrees north to 60 degrees north, usually we use a value of 10 to the minus fourth per second when we're working with this equation here. So just going through some of the math here, so Rossby number, uh, characteristic wind speed divided by characteristic time, and the entire thing divided by Coriolis parameter multiplied by uh, characteristic horizontal wind speed. And if we want to, we can use the fact that speed is equal to distance over time, so this is where L enters the story. So we can use the fact that the speed is equal to the length divided by the time. And if we solve for time in that equation, we get that uh, capital T, the horizontal time scale, is equal to the characteristic horizontal time scale. <laughs> the characteristic time scale is equal to the horizontal length scale divided by the characteristic horizontal wind speed. So if we take that expression for T and substitute it in for this t in the equation for Rossby number, we get that the Rossby number is equal to u squared over L all divided by f times u. Again, I don't want to read that in sequence. But if you simplify that down, you get that the Rossby number is equal to the horizontal wind speed u divided by Coriolis parameter times the characteristic horizontal length scale. And this is the most commonly encountered Rossby number definition that you will see uh, when you're going through a course of meteorology. So again, this capital U, characteristic horizontal wind speed, and this horizontal length L is the uh, characteristic horizontal length, and then the Coriolis parameter f, which is also in the denominator. And 
you'll do an exercise with this in your homework assignment, but you can show that if you've got uh, large values of ROSB number, that means that your Coriolis force is relatively insignificant. Because if F is relatively insignificant, that means you have a small denominator, which means you have a large ROSB number. Versus if you have a small ROSB number, that would imply that your denominator is large and Coriolis force is the denominator. So a small ROSB number implies a large Coriolis force, which implies a significant Coriolis force. But that's going to do it for this definition and introduction of the Rosby number. And in the next segment, we will take a look at something called Rosby waves. So with that, I will see you all in the next segment.